So what if I wanted to attempt to remove a node that doesn't exist? So in our case, I wanted to remove, say for example, 46. Well, I would traverse my nodes just like before, and I would see that 45 has no 46. So in this case, I would use whatever I accessed before, just like I would did I did when I was dealing with a lookup that had no, a non-existent node. I would go to sort of whatever accessed, accessed that beforehand. And in this case, I would work off of my 45. Now, I don't remove 45 because, again, I, I wanted to remove 46. I just use 45 because I still need to splay uh, this as my new root node. Well, that means we happen to have some x, some y, and some z. Now you notice that in this situation we are dealing with a zig zag structure. And as a result, we use try node restructuring. Restructuring. So as a result, just like always, we need to establish what my A, B, and C are. My A, my B, and my C. And as always, these are working off of an in-order uh, proceeding. So I only worry about my x, y, and z. So I've, as we've seen in the past, since I'm not dealing with any left child, I don't work off of that left, and then I access myself. So in this case, I would access z. Then I would need to say, well, who am I accessing next? I don't access y next because even though it is my right child, I see that it has some left children. So I would want to go down and access them first. And in this case, we happen to see that that's my x, and then we see that I am left with a y. So just like we've done in the past, we need to establish, given this structure, who gets my t1, my t2, my t3, and my t4 uh, nodes. So just to kind of draw them back out, I see that t1 is coming from uh, Z's left side, T1. Uh, T2 is coming from X's left side. T3 is coming from T, uh, X's right side. And then finally, T4 is coming from whatever Y's right side was. And if we remember what I want to do with this, I want to take B, whatever node happens to be B, and give it C and A as its next available children. The reason why this is important is, again, A will get T1 and then T2, and C will get T3 and T4. No, that's a little tiny there, so squint real good. So, in this case, I would take this structure, and again, even though 46 was what I was worrying about, I never had a 46, so I worked off of what would have been accessed beforehand, and in this case, we see it's that 45, so 45 gets to become the new root node. My A would happen to be my Z, and that's the left node, so 30 would come over to the left, my right node would be whatever C was, which was Y, which is 50. And then I would inherit T1. T1 would come over to the left side of whatever Z was. T1 happens to be 25 and 20. Now there happens to be no T2 or T3, so we are kind of lucking out there. I wouldn't give anything to 30 and I wouldn't give anything to 50, but I still would give 50 T4. And so in this case, 75 would be the right child. Let me make that a little bigger. 75. Then 80. And finally, 76 and 90.